Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel Learn Life Science. Myself Vinita Tiwari and in today's video I will be talking about the thermodynamics of protein folding. Basically the protein folding is nothing but the folding of the linear polypeptide chain into its native form. Native form in simple terms the folded form of the polypeptide that is the folded protein. Okay, functional protein. So basically we will be talking about the thermodynamics of protein folding. When we uh, use the term thermodynamics, it simply means that we are concerned with the change in free energy. Right. So similarly, we will have to focus on the change in free energy. And along with that, we are also going to focus a little on the entropy of the molecule. Okay. So we will be studying three things. A hydrophobic collapse, then the landscape theory, and then we will be seeing a little about energy funnel. Okay, it is going to be a short and simple video to give you a clear idea of the protein folding thermodynamics. Okay, so now we will be starting first with hydrophobic collapse. Okay, so protein is composed of a linear chain of amino acids, right? right it is a polymer of amino acid. So, if we want to categorize amino acids, we can simply categorize it into a polar form as well as a non-polar form, right? So, the non-polar forms, for example, non-polar amino acids include alanine, valine, leucine, isoleucine, tryptophan, phenyl, and anine methionine, okay? And the remaining contributes to the polar amino acids, okay? Uh, it is also noted that uh, amino acids like proline and uh, glycine they form intermediate relation for example they can contribute a polar a form or they can also contribute to the non-polar side okay so why i'm uh, classifying these amino acids right now because we are going to study the hydrophobic collapse hydrophobic collapse is simply con concerned with the hydrophobic amino acids which are the part of the polypeptide chain Okay, so in this case, you will be studying that the folding is initiated by the spontaneous collapse of polypeptide into a compact state mediated by hydrophobic interaction among non-polar residues. In simple terms, for example, in this picture, you can see that, for example, in this state, the polypeptide is in its linear form and there is random coiling present in it. Okay, you can see here the random coils which are formed. And the environment around the polypeptide is also a major contributing factor which decides the conformation of the final protein. Okay, remember this thing. For example, if we are taking here water, okay, for example, in the surrounding there is presence of water molecule. Okay, and this is your, in black color, this is your polypeptide chain. In this case, you can see I have marked the non-polar residues or non-polar amino acids red color okay i have taken red color for the non-polar amino acids and the remaining contributes to the polar amino acids which can easily interact with the water what basically happens in this case in uh, first figure in figure a you can see that the water molecules are free okay water molecules are free but whenever they come and interact with the polypeptide when there is condition that in the environment there is presence of a polypeptide what simply happens water starts its shielding effect what it do it simply shield the non-polar residues like this okay non-polar residues can also be termed as the hydrophobic residues, right? Which are not able to interact freely in such solvents, okay? Such polar solvent. So therefore, we can see here such kind of shielding effect which is performed by water. Now, what actually is happening here, the shielding of the non-polar residues by the water causes the decrease in entropy of water, okay? There is decrease in entropy of water. Okay, as you can see here, the water molecule will start migrating towards the non-polar residues and they are going to get some kind of alignment, right? So, this alignment, this proper alignment of the water molecule is making it the decrease in randomness, okay? So, now the water molecules are not able to move freely. Instead of that, they are simply aligning towards the non-polar residues. 
so this is causing the decrease in entropy okay i hope now you are clear with this thing now in order to make it thermodynamically favorable what will we have to do in order to make it thermodynamically favorable the water will have to increase its entropy right so in picture b the water will increase its entropy by simply causing the hydrophobic amino acids to aggregate towards the core side okay if the hydrophobic amino acid aggregates towards the core what will happen now the water molecules are free in the environment there is no need to shield the non polar residues because the non polar residues are already present in the core okay and this causes the increase in entropy of the solvent so in this case in hydrophobic collapse you can see here we are mainly concerned with the entropy of the solvent right so therefore the single largest contribution to the stability of a folded protein is the entropy the change in entropy of solvent for the non polar residues okay this is as simple it is the water or the solvent causes the shielding effect and in order to increase the its entropy to make it thermodynamically favorable there is aggregation of non polar residues towards the core and in order to attain this aggregation or in order to get inside the core the molecules interact with each other each other in such a form that they finally attain a final folded form okay uh, it is not a direct step okay it is not a direct step from unfolded to folded state there is several several formation of intermediate while passing through the uh, unfolded state to a final native form okay so this is why we also study the another model that is the landscape theory or the energy funnel of protein folding okay i hope you are clear till this point now now talking about the landscape theory uh, this theory is also based on the change in free energy also concerned with the change in entropy okay so what basically happens here is we know that the unfolded form the unfolded form of the protein undergoes conformational adjustments okay conformational adjustment is carried out by the polypeptide in order to gain a final native stable form right so what basically happens you can see here that we know this thing that the unfolded protein is going to fold itself right and this is going to happen in a series of stages right it will have to go through several intermediate until it attains a stable intermediate okay so this can be represented by uh, considering two more factors like the energy as well as the entropy okay now you can see here um, the change in entropy okay for example if i am uh, drawing this plane right here you can see here this is the entropy entropy means what in this case you can see that the polypeptide is in its unfolded form means obviously the randomness will be more or the entropy will be high right this is a common thing that in this case the entropy is going to be high now as the protein or the polypeptide will fold upon itself or it will uh, or when it will undergo conformational adjustment obviously there will be compactness right the compactness will be increased and this compactness or uh, this proper alignment of folding or the uh, residue interaction will cause the decrease in entropy right so you can see here at final stage the, the entropy is decreased at this point okay so the first thing which we have learned is the entropy decreases from the unfolded state to its native state okay the second thing is the energy also decreases along with the entropy okay it is a common thing that both are interrelated so the protein or polypeptide are going to fold via a series of conformational adjustments that reduce their free energy and entropy until the native state is reached okay so at the uh, unfolded form the energy is also high and it lowers along with the conformational adjustment in simple terms the unfolded polypeptide will 
अंडर गो कन्फर्मेशनल एडजस्टमेंट अंटिल एंड अनलेस इट अटेन्स द लोवेस्ट एनर्जी स्टेट ओके दिस इज वॉट दे वॉन्ट टू शो अस दैट द अनफोल्डेड प्रोटीन ट्राइज टू एडजस्ट इट सेल्फ बाय फॉर्मिंग सेवरल इंटरमीडिएट्स लाइक मोल्टन ग्लोब्यूल और डिस्क्रीट फोल्डिंग इंटरमीडिएट अंटिल इट फॉर्म्स अ स्टेबल फॉर्म विथ द लोवेस्ट एनर्जी ओके सो इन दिस लैंडस्केप थेरी बेसिकली वी स्टडी the conformational adjustment of protein until it reaches the lowest gibbs energy okay so this funnel you are seeing here as the folding proceeds the narrowing of funnel like this way the narrowing of funnel simply represents the decrease in number of conformational species present right and along this side you can see certain kind of depressions right so these small depressions along the sides of this funnel represents the semi stable intermediates okay these are the semi stable intermediates and this is your final stable intermediate which is the native state okay so now we will study it in more detail form by uh, using a single picture okay so this is the energy funnel picture you can see here in a more detail view um, i have also mentioned the reference uh, here you can uh, download the picture from this website okay so now in this case they have also uh, they have shown the same thing that in first state that in first state the number of conformations are high and therefore the entropy will be highest right you can see here the unfolded protein okay it has uh, gone uh, undergone several random coiling you can see here but still it is in unfolded form and therefore the entropy is also it at its highest okay only a small fraction of intramolecular interactions will exist in this form okay now as the folding is going to proceed the entropy is going to decrease okay you can see here the entropy is at its tip point it is very much decreased means now the protein is in its final folded form with minimum or negligible randomness okay so in this case you have you can see that the funnel proceeds from unfolded state to the folded state the folded protein is also known as the native protein or native polypeptide on one hand you can see here the energy is higher in unfolded state and energy is lowest at its native state okay also you can see that the percentage of residues of protein in native conformation can be you can see here from 0% to 100% this percentage simply resembles the conformation okay from 0% to 100% the conformations which were uh, formed by the residues by the amino acids right and one more thing uh, we are seeing here is the molten globule state what is this molten globule state now basically what, what happens that while going through uh, several foldings the unfolded form also gain certain kinds of secondary structures okay but this secondary structures many a times have exposed residues okay and in this condition when they attain the secondary structures but with exposed amino acids or when the amino acids are not entirely fixed such states are called as molten globule state okay this molten globule state again these molten globule state intermediates again undergo you can see in this picture again undergo proper alignment of the residues there is formation of uh, beta sheets or alpha helices you can see here which gives them another intermediate which is named as discrete folding intermediate okay and further adjustments by these chains or by these amino acid residues leads to the formation of the native protein or the folded protein okay while studying the thermodynamics of the protein folding it is important to remember only two things that the entropy decreases from the unfolded form to the folded form as well as the energy also decreases from higher state higher energy level to lower energy level obviously the delta g is going to be negative to make it favorable okay and this is what we study in thermodynamics okay i hope you are clear with this point so in simple statement as the folding progresses the thermodynamic path down the funnel reduces the number of states which are 
present in the native conformation and this causes the decrease in the free energy okay so this was all about the thermodynamics of protein folding if you have still any kind of doubt you can mention in the comment section don't forget to like share and subscribe and also don't forget to follow our new instagram channel that is learn life science thank you so much for watching